Okay, everybody, we are starting our cooking class with happy food chef Robin Joy. She's right up here in my top left window. <laughs> We're all excited. I know we've got, we got half of us, well, more than half showing our video. Okay, thank you, Janie. Brian's in there. <laughs> I'm just going to let people in as they join. So I'll, I'm not going to stop it. I'm just going to let them in and they'll join on in. So we'll do that. But Robin, I'm going to just hand it over to you and tell us what we get to cook with today. I'm excited because I love that you add things that we're growing. And so for yeah. our planted box people, we got the lemon balm and we got the Moroccan mint and the violas just this month. And I love that you have all of them. And then the planted wall people are growing a ton of parsley. So, and amongst other stuff, but their parsley is a big, a huge guy in the planted wall and the planted box people will get that very soon. So right. take it away. All right. Well, I did choose this recipe. Well, uh, I chose this because we can do many things from this uh, because you don't have to do it with just parsley. You can do, the, you're going to see this is a hemp tabbouleh. So the hemp is replacing the cracked wheat, um, but you can use cracked wheat. You can use cracked wheat plus the hemp seeds if you want. So there's many variations. If you don't have parsley, you could take spinach for spinach and chop it up super, super fine and do it, you know, obviously a different flavor. You could do cilantro. So you can do a lot of different greens and have this type of salad. And, and as, Robin, would arugula work too? I mean, when you said spinach, yes, I'm not thinking so about other stuff. Okay, okay. Or absolutely. Kale, or kale. Okay. Oh, cool. You know, I'm, I just used the loosely when the word tabbouleh, but it's basically, it's a chopped salad that uh, the protein in it is coming from the hemp seeds. Um, if you want to use your cracked wheat, you can. You could also use quinoa if you wanted to. You could use ground rice. You could use farro. You could do anything you want, but this is just the basic that I chose because everybody's growing parsley. And also I wanted to use the mint. I wanted the lemon balm. So the uh, violas will be a, a garnish. I don't have those here, but you know, so I want to use as much as what we were growing. And you know what, can I, I I'm gonna ask, I, oh, just, I love these cooking classes because I am a novice. I love to grow, but I, this is why I'm so excited because I don't know how to cook. <laughs> so I'm, I remember I'm the baker. So, um, so, Cracked wheat. Um, I have actually never purchased that before. So can, can you, I mean, I'm a little bit on the gluten. I try to stay away from gluten. That's one reason why right. I'm curious, uh, but talk a little bit, just a little right. bit. Right. And that was another reason why I chose the hemp seeds because so many people are doing gluten-free. But quite honestly, I mean, unless you are, we talked about that before with the gluten thing, um, unless you really have serious cracked wheat, um, good, you know, beautiful cracked wheat shouldn't, shouldn't bother you, but yeah. you know, everybody's different. So you just have, to, that's why I chose this specifically because of the hemp seeds that so we have to, we could skirt that whole thing, but you could use other things. You could use a, a beautiful short grain as opposed to a long grain brown rice. Okay. To use a rice, I'd use that. Or you could do a gorgeous black rice with, I mean, there's so many things it's, it's really this is about the concept to be able to incorporate more greens, okay, in a different way than a traditional salad. Mm -hmm. um, and to have, to be able to also in this one dish, to be able to have everything. So to have enough protein. And if you did the, let's say you did a brown rice, uh, short grain brown rice or a black rice, and you put in hemp seeds. So now in one dish, you have your perfect carbs, you've got all your greens and other veggies and your hemp seeds for protein, it's a complete meal. So that's why I chose this. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started with, um, and, and also you'd have two bowls for your dressings when we get to part. So um, I don't know who's got what cut up, but we're gonna start with the um, so we're going to start with the parsley. Okay. And I, I chopped up some pre, so you can see how fine that is. Whoops. Hello. So I just spill it all over the place. Okay. And then, but what I'm going to show you is here's my parsley. 
So guess where the most nutrition is in this parsley, guys? Where's the most nutrition? Stem. Correct. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Correct. And so the normal tendency is to take these gorgeous stems off, right? No. Uh -huh. no. Wow. No. I did not know that. that. Right. And that is why we want to cut it so fine. So generally, when I cut, I'm going to cut this in half. And then I put the two halves together. And I want to see if I can tilt that more. Because then I'm going to then cut really fine. So I do my first chop as fine as I can. Um, in pieces. But then I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you the technique for cutting it even finer. Um, because again, and I had said this, but I don't think everybody was online. If you don't cut this fine enough and if you don't have enough dressing on it, you know, and it's curly parsley, you can choke on it easily. So, um, I love that. so to cut, okay, we're going to take the head of the knife right here, the tip, with our hand down and on our cutting board, we're just going to start at one side and we're going to work our way just chopping like this. And that will give us, and you have to have a, a sharp knife to do this, but this will get it fine enough. And you just keep moving it, pull it together, and that you can get really nice fine. And then comes your own preference, how fine you want to go. But uh, in, in most of my chopped salads, you know, I like to cut things. First of all, cut by hand, and I'll tell you why. Uh, if you're doing it with either let's say a mandolin or a food processor or whatever, things are gonna be much more uniform. This is just a personal thing. I hate uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right. awesome. I was just sitting here thinking, oh, I'm not gonna do that. Right. But I should so do that. I, you know, this is my kitchen. I'm cooking for my personal use. So when I look at my parsley, I got small, medium, and large. Okay. But girls, we're all wearing the uniform. We're all in black. We're ready to be shot. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's why I like to, I really prefer to cut by hand. I just think it looks, I know people think, oh, it's so pretty. It's so perfect. It's, it's like, I don't want it perfect. I think it looks beautiful when there's different sizes. And, and then I'll shapes of how I want to cut that's different you know if I want something on a slant or if I want something straight up and down whatever but you know it's just I think kind of, there's something about the way it looks to my eye when it's cut by hand that's just so beautiful so that's just me you know well it's like your quote about food being art right like you're making a composition yeah it is art it is art so all right, so how are we doing with the parsley, everybody? Getting there. Doing great. My brother is there. You can see his face. Hey, how are oh, you? There's still no voice. Hey, Brian. <laughs> you see Holly? Hi, I'm Janie. Nice to see you. I'm Christy. <laughs> You're on mute. Brian, turn on your sound so I can oh, say hi. Somebody Hear your voice. Oh, it's Janie. Yeah. Talk to me, talk to me. Oh, he's gone. Oh, okay. he's like saw us, all us ladies. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Hi. He's just learning. He's just learning. Hey, Brian. <laughs> he won't. He won't shut up once he figures out how to, to unmute that. So just you're like you don't want him to know. <laughs> he won't stop telling you what you're doing wrong. Trust me. Hey, you know I'm not. I never went to culinary school, Brian. I I've been cooking since I I grew up in the kitchen with my grandmother and my mother. So that's where I come from. Oh, he's not yeah. as about it. He's not like that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, okay. so you're going to get your parsley cut. The, the, have you guys cut up anything else? Are we going to move on? To, uh, I've cut up everything. I've cut up tomato and red pepper and cucumber. 
and now okay. I have to so I wanted to talk about the cucumber with everybody. I know, I want Robin to teach us how to cut this up because I'm like, I have not cut because I'm waiting for instruction. <laughs> Ryan, whatever we can hear you, we'll hear you, but you have to work that out on your own. Okay. I'm okay. Cooking. Go ahead. Christy. Yes, Christy. I'm listening. Okay. Let me, let me see your cucumber. Let me see what cucumber you Okay, um, your cucumber. <laughs> I told you, cooking well, in stack. Here's the thing. I asked my husband to get me an English cucumber. So I just got a regular cucumber, but at least it's a cucumber, right? It's a cucumber. That's right. And thank you, yeah. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So is it organic? Oh, yes. He knows not to. Yes, he knows. Okay, good. All right. So. You're, what you're going to do is, um, yeah. and depending on how much, how many bunches apart. Well, you didn't buy bunches because you you had. No, I just here. harvested, but I got, I got, I don't know, I got, I can't, I got quite a lot. It's kind of hard to see, but okay. I mean, it was. There's quite a lot. There's probably about a cup of a cup of chopped parsley here. Okay, well that's not that much, but that's, oh. so okay. it does. Cut that first. Cut the cucumber in half. Okay. Because when cucumber, and on the yeah. half. Uh, and let's see, where is Hay Haley? Is that Haley? Uh, I don't know what you've got for cucumbers, but here's a question. If you're using a right, right, and then just cut off the other end, the other, the very end. Okay. Okay. So how do I talk? What? What? How do I talk? Now, just say it, because she's, she's giving a lesson right now, but you're talking now. We can hear you. Oh, you can? Yeah. Yes. Hi, Brian. Hey! Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, so teaching us how to cut a cucumber. So dip it for. Well, a we asked. For, I asked them for different cucumbers. So depending on. That's <laughs> nice. Like we got our cucumber. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 this is dangerous. Okay. Ready to go. Anyway. We'll go to all right. So if you have this is a Persian cucumber. I chose this because I wanted to not have to deal with too many seeds, right? The deal with the seeds in terms of health is, you know, have you ever heard some people, well, I can't digest cucumbers or I get, you know, I burp from cucumbers, whatever. A lot of times that's from the seeds. Oh. Okay. Especially cucumber that you have the big one. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take the cucumber, you're going to cut it lengthwise. You're going to cut it in half like that. Okay. Right? Yeah. So your cucumber, you make an incision. You're going to do a V. Where you see the seeds on either side of the seeds, imagine carving in a little V and then those seeds will lift right out. Got so it. Even though this is a Persian, I'm going to do it on this. That was and very easy. Very easy to do. Yeah, it's very easy. And then you just cut out those seeds. So it looks like that. Okay. Oh, perfect. All right. Pretty That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, see, here's mine. I did it. Perfect. Okay. okay. So now you're going to cut that. Oh, actually, you're going to cut that because that's so big. And you want tiny pieces, so you're going to do at least four cuts in that because it's so wide. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, so we can cut it um, because we want this delicate and we don't want big pieces of anything in here. Okay, so then we chop those up. And I'm not going to get into real chopping methods tonight because that's a whole other thing. But the class again. all on that. Right. right. So you can throw that in so now i'm going to put get my big bowl so i've already cut up uh i'm using both red onion and green onions because i happen to love both of them uh, but you can do whatever you want and then i'm going to add in so as you start to try things just now what add about chives because that's something that we grow a lot it's a very different, different chive and I love chives, awesome, but not for this. Oh, okay. Glad I asked. Okay, it's a very different flavor. Okay. Um, you could, if you didn't have 
green onions or red onion or sweet onion, you and or regular onion, but you could also use shallots. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, okay, and remember to keep out a little bit of the onion, uh, a little bit, and also your mint. You guys got mint? Got mint. And uh, now, Robin, I got a question about the, the onion. Is there yeah. any, any tricks for avoiding, like, you know, the crying that goes along with the onion? Yeah. Uh, cut, if you put your cutting board near your sink and run cold water, okay, it will help. Ah, okay. Light a candle. Light a candle works. That's a new one. What? What? That's a new one. The, the cutting board by the sink. That's a new yeah, one. You know, it's, it's, I know, it's with cold running water. Just saved my life. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes. it's true. It's a pain. <laughs> Always put a piece of bread in your mouth. Ah, okay. Bread in your mouth. Wow. Uh -huh. I told you once he found the way to speak, he's it's gonna okay. speak. I, I want to learn. So, you know, you know what? We all know stuff. But it's endless. It's it's. No, I'm so happy to have him here. Seriously. Yeah, it's endless. I don't know everything. I can hear your respiratory, though. I mean, there is a benefit to these onions. <laughs> Listen, I used to do cases of them. We used to wear masks. <laughs> oh. Yeah. When oh, I worked at a restaurant, we had to wear masks, you know, because we were just doing cases of onions. It was like killing cases of onions. Been there, done that. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. We were on the line at the Masters. He he would he was a chef at the Masters every year, so it was like massive amounts of. Oh, yeah, wow. my hands can't do that anymore. My hands totally took a beating from all the prepping. Yes, the George. That's why I don't do it anymore. That's why I teach. I'll come prep for you. Huh? I'll come prep for you. I have sharp knives and ready to go. All right. I love it. All right, so now I'm going to teach you a little trick, and I don't know if you you have experienced this, but so cherry tomatoes, right? If your knife is not sharp enough, like if you go and cut your knife anywhere on the tomato, right, and it won't cut easily, start your cut right there at that little spot where it yeah. comes off the stem. And it cuts like you can take the dullest knife and it'll just cut right through it, as oh, opposed that's... as opposed to entering it from the skin. Right? Is that right, Brian? Ma'am. Oh, how did I not know this all these years? <laughs> I right. can't tell how many times I'm looking for a jagged, um, you know, knife so that I can cut my tomatoes. Right. So you cut on that spot especially on the cherry tomatoes, and it'll go right through. Right so, through. yeah, Love it. On cherry tomatoes, I, I want my pieces of tomato really small. I want everything small. Let me see what they look like. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so I'm dumping all that in my salad. Now I, um, so the, so are we gonna cut the onion or no? Like we're, we're supposed to have already done that? Well, it doesn't matter, no. I mean, nobody, there was no supposed to's here, so. You know, whatever you have to do, you do. So cut up your onion, of course, really fine. And remember to leave out for the dressing, okay? Remember to leave out some of the onion, some of the mint. Uh, I like, I think we said a little red pepper. Garlic is to be used in the dressing. Okay, we're gonna have two bowls. Because we're gonna go from a lemony dressing to a creamier dressing. Love it. Okay, so the red pepper is is for the dressing. Is that what you just said? Well, most salad, and you're going to leave out a little bit for the dressing. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. Yep. Cutting away. Okay. Um, and then your mint, cut up, you know, do the same thing with your mint and your red pepper, get it all cut up. Now I had heard that there was a, with, okay, so with the onion, because I have to cut mine right now, I, I've, I've learned that like you don't want to cut this right. end, right? Okay. Right, because that way it's easier 
when you cut it in half, right? Okay. Right. So not where that that end, uh -huh. right? Where it grows. You're gonna. You don't want to cut that off at all at this point. So you want to cut. If that's a, I don't have an onion here. That's not cut off. That's the uh, root. That's the root end. Yeah. yeah, the part. You don't want to cut that off. What you want to do is you want to take the onion where that root thing is and you're going to cut it in half. Okay. Okay, so that you keep that intact because then we're going to work from the other end. We'll cut off the other end a little bit. And okay. then that way, if I'm going to make, if I'm cutting onion and I want it chopped, okay, I'm going to do a slice or two or three up. Then I'm going to be cutting this way into it, and you don't cut down to that root because the root will keep it together, and that will be discarded at the very end. Does okay. that make sense? I'm going to be putting that the cold water while you're talking. That is a brilliant hack. I've never heard of that. Thank you. So, you're so welcome. The, uh, follow Angela. She knows what she's doing. Me? Yes. With that giant knife? <laughs> I'm not getting behind her. <laughs> I taught her well. You're so funny. I love oh, it. I love you guys. You're too cute. <laughs> okay, so how are we doing there, guys? Do we have everything cut up? Almost. I'm almost there. I'm doing that. I'm about to do the uh, the pepper, and I'm done. Holly, where are you? Holly's having pizza. Oh, she's having pizza. She's like, oh my gosh, I don't have time to chop. Okay. She's eating something green. I think she's eating her salad. Okay. <laughs> I I okay. So that. Ron, the troopers is barking in the background. So I muted myself because Trooper's barking. Ah, very good. I got to tell you, look what happened, you guys. This was amazing. So I did what you said. I don't know if you can see this, guys, but it, like, it did that in like a minute. Yeah, so now you might, I can't really see it, but then from there, if you want it finer, then you're gonna go back with nice. your knife doing this, okay? okay? All right. All right, so then it looks like with everything in it. Ah, it looks so delicious. Yeah, and then we're gonna be adding in the hemp seeds. So, and you guys have the recipe, I believe, right? Because I don't use recipes, so I just throw it in till I get it to where I want it, balance-wise. Yeah, because I want it to look like tabbouleh. Um, and of oh, course, everybody tabbouleh look. differently. Have a look. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Thirsty. It's in a pot. Okay. Oh, now, adding seeds, and this is what it looks like. Can you see that with the hemp seeds? Oh, how much? Oh, it looks oh, it's awesome. I'm just gonna put some apple in mine. I found some beautiful apples today. Apple? Wow, that's adventuresome. Well, you know what I would put in this that I would love is pomegranate. That's what I'd like. Oh. <laughs> yes. Huh? Or, or or goji berries too are beautiful because I love the you know goji. I mean, listen, this is the thing. This is a base. You can do anything, go anywhere with this that you want. Right. It, it's and just a limit. There's a limit. You know, to I hate to take over this, but you need some of the pomegranate molasses that I made. Ooh, Ooh. that sounds great because I would use that in my dressing. I'm Just telling you, fantastic. Ah, sounds yummy. I'll be right over. <laughs> so with I'll, you. Click, I'll click my heels, right? Right? Just okay. bring my sister with you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, okay, guys. So um, I guess we're going to move on to the dressing. You ready for the dressing? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna put this to the side, get my bowl for my dressing. So in the bowl, we're gonna take the garlic 
And again, this is to your own personal taste. I have my leftover mint and onion that's really finely chopped, really fine. On this dressing, it's gotta be super finely chopped, okay? And I'm, a little bit, I'm sorry, Rob, I'm a little bit behind. So what did you just start? What did you first put in there? Because I'm trying to catch, do multitask here. Okay. okay, the garlic. Okay, the garlic. Okay. And then a little bit of the chopped onion or green onion, whatever you've got. Okay. And the mint. And the mint. Okay. Right. So some of the mint, most of the mint's going to go in the salad, but we left enough to put it in the dressing. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna take and put in my lemon juice. So I'm gonna make quite a bit. And just, and when I mix this, I don't just mix it, I'm mashing it. So it, it just, when you mash it, it just releases, it breaks the, the uh, breaks open the mint a bit more, the onion gets the garlic and get that going. Um, okay, then I'm going to add in. So we get the and we talked about the dressings in the last class. So now we get the acid in there. So at this point, this is where I want to add my honey. So it'll help it dissolve a bit. So let me, boom. What are we doing? What are we putting? We're adding just a touch of honey, not a lot, just a little, just to break the acidity. Okay. Remember sugar, oil, and salt. Remember yes. that whole discussion? Yes, teacher. I remember that. <laughs> Emulsifying, is that right? Emulsifying? Well, not yet. Not yet, okay. This one we're not going to emulsify, really. I never uh, read the directions. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You don't have to. It's just, you know, this is where you can just do your own thing. Because really the most important part is going to be when it hits your lips so that you can taste it. Uh, because if you don't start tasting it as you go, you're not going to learn how to cook. So, oh, I love that advice. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I was just going to say, this is what I love about everything you say, Robin, because like what I want to get from this more than anything is how do you just like figure out how to just cook without a recipe and just know that, you know, know the basics enough that you can do exactly what you just said. All right, so the two things are, first of all, you have to taste the food. So every single food that I ever will put in my mouth or cook with, like, you know, as a matter of fact, last night I uh, made Jerusalem, I have never really done much at all, at all with Jerusalem artichokes. So the farm that my friend has, she sent me home with a whole container of their homegrown Jerusalem artichokes. So I cleaned them all up. The first thing I'm going to do raw is I'm going to taste that thing to just see what the texture is, what it feels like in my mouth, what it tastes like, right? So every inch of the way, I got to know what each individual food tastes like. I got to know before I do anything what the pupil tastes like, what my even in your tomatoes. If you have a crummy tomato that has no flavor, I want to know that before I put it in the dish because I've actually taking vegetables that if it has no flavor, why the hell use it? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Right? Mm -hmm. So you got to start tasting everything. Right. So, and, and then as you go, you adjust to your own palate because what I like, and, and especially with acidity, I mean, I like high acidity in a lot of things. So for someone else, it may not work. Um, the same thing it's like that guy, the guy on Facebook who was asking about bok choy, and I know he was asking more about a harvesting question, but it's like, just give someone the freedom to take that bok choy leaf and eat it. You know what I mean? Everybody's like, I need a recipe. I need a recipe. And I'm like, uh, just eat it. Christy, when I was at your place last week, I would just go out there and eat those leaves. So that bok choy is going crazy. Oh. I know so big. And I was like, I'm just going to, I don't know what to do with it. So I just started eating it. Like it was a popsicle. I love that. And, and, you know, the thing is, people, like, you can use those little snip scissors we sent and, and you know, chiffonade them, cut them into little strips, top them on your soup, put them on a, you know, pasta, warm them a moment. You know, there's, like, I'm going to start including little things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, I, that, you know, that guy, Jeff, he, I, uh, he DM'd me 
and was like, okay, what do I do with this bok choy? And so then I just said the, oh my gosh, you put that, what did I say? Stir fry, put it in your noodle soup, put it on your scrambled eggs. I just started giving him all these ideas. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but it tastes so good. I mean, it's like when you put it in your mouth, like, oh my gosh, it's actually like it becomes it, it it becomes a, its own sort of thing. It's just right because that's what down the line. Once you know what all your ingredients, and the same thing for all your spices. I mean, and different salts and different oh, you know, and, and, your, and your vinegars and your oils. I mean, you have to know the taste of what you're putting in your food before you. Can, do anything because that's going to help you and and over time when you know what things taste like then you can start to you know like the minute i put this in i know exactly what that's going to do to the flavor so, and our flavor is so good because our dirt is so good right? yeah so you guys have the best of all worlds because you're growing your own food okay so i've got my acid my sugar my veggies in here uh, the, the, the honey broke down and now it's in there to just cut it a little bit um, and to give it that balance. Uh, now we are going to go in and we are going to put in our oil. And, you know, we have different oils we can use here. So uh, if you want, sometimes I love using a beautiful either toasted or raw sesame oil or Tonight, I'm actually going to mix. I'm going to use two different oils. I'm going to because I, I didn't have any. I didn't have enough olive oil left. Generally, I do olive oil, but I'm going to also mix in some avocado oil. Um, so real and, quick, that's so interesting, Robin, that you said sesame oil because it's such a strong taste. Would you recommend that for this? Well, I'll tell you what I could. What would also I, you could. It, it's this is where this is where I don't like even using the word tabbouleh here. Okay. Okay. I did it because it's a reference for people because people know what tabbouleh is, but I really don't like doing that. Like if I say, you know, when I was in the raw world as a raw food chef, um, we say, oh, well, we're making a raw lasagna today. Well, you know what? I don't like calling it that, but it does give people something that it's, they'll, they'll have a better idea, but you can change the flavors because if you start out, let's say you start out on this recipe of the dressing with olive oil, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't use the sesame. So we can make, and that's what I'm going to do. We're going to use the olive oil, but we start out with that. But let's say we want to then shift and we want to make a different flavor in here. Okay, we can take, cause I'm gonna show you, we're gonna take and make this into a creamy dressing. We're gonna do just that. We're gonna add tahini. Mm. It's gonna give it a whole different, you'll come up with a whole different dressing. And there's no reason to say that we can't use it on this salad. There's no, there's no reason we can't, but it really comes down to what do you feel like having for dinner? What kind of flavor do you want? Mm -hmm. Right? I so that shows this because I wanted you to understand that this isn't just tabbouleh. This is a base of chopped greens, chopped very fine. And when you have tons of cilantro and you have tons of parsley and you don't know what to do, you've got more than you can use. Even, it, it doesn't matter, any of your greens, you cut it, your firm greens, you cut that up really fine. You can make a beautiful chopped salad like this. And then you add in, you can do it with nuts and seeds. You can do it with your grains. You, this, it's so endless what you can do here. You could right. add nuts to this. I mean, you could add nuts to this, right? I mean, you I can, have, you can, absolutely. You can add anything to this. I mean, I'm looking at this and I'm just like, well, you know, some pistachio nuts would be really gorgeous in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's really, there's no end to what you can do. You just have to know what your ingredients taste like. Uh, so, okay. So I'm going to add my oil to my dressing and get, and again, you guys got to taste it as you're doing it. I don't, this doesn't matter. Remember we talked last week about emulsifying? This, when I'm not looking to emulsify, I'm just looking to get this well blended in there as I drizzle it in. Okay. 
Oh, I forgot garlic. I'm gonna want that. Hang on. Yeah, and and, and I know because I'm I'm a little bit behind the eight ball, but I'm catching up. The garlic, minced or chopped. Wait, I don't have it that way. Hang on. Robin, so is it minced this, or chopped? For this one, you can do. It depends on what you want. I did mine in a press today. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna the press. So you can use a garlic press. And then, of course, we're going to put in salt and pepper. I bought hummus and and wraps, and that's what I'm going to do with mine. Yeah, well, I we have, actually we don't have um, not wraps, and we didn't have any pita, but we're using uh, Indian tin. You know, we're using non bread, and then okay. earlier. This, I think I sent you guys a picture, but this right here. The farro, it's beautiful. Oh, it's wow. farro with shallots and red peppers. Oh, we have in here uh, pumpkin seeds. We have pine nuts. Oh, can you and show a picture again? Can you show it up to the camera again? Sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. On file. She put it And in then there. what's going to go on top of this is going to be wilted arugula chopped arugula that i'm going to heat this up slightly and then i'm going to wilt the arugula top of it. Oh. and oh. it has rosemary on it oh i love the warm <laughs> topping that's beautiful yeah now yeah. how do you do how do you wilt the arugula so I, i'm going to heat up i've already cooked that that's all prepped ready to go so i'm just going to heat it up i'm going to sit the arugula right on top of it once it's hot underneath I'm going to put a cover on it for two seconds and it'll be well done. Oh, oh, that's a great tip. Okay. I okay, like that. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see. I've added my pepper. I need to add salt. And, and the other thing too, guys, we use lemon on this, but I mean, you can do this recipe with apple cider vinegar. I sometimes mix apple cider vinegar with my lemon. So I mix my acids depending on what I want this to taste like. It's, and I'm, I'm mixing my seeds right now. That's what I'm doing. You're what mixing you your seeds. So do, oh. you ever, do you ever like toast the nuts with your arugula? That could be good. Oh, oh my God, I love, listen, my favorite is toasted uh, hazelnuts. Oh, nice. Oh yeah. I've been softening my nuts like Ethiopian style and everything just for digestion. Uh huh. Yes. Well, what we used to do in the rep, you know, when I was working in the restaurant uh, for raw food, we would soak our nuts, then we would dehydrate them. Oh, interesting. To get them crisp again. Interesting. Right. That's cool. So I wonder if that's how they do the cho cho. Um, I don't know. I haven't. I, I just got my package. And I, have, I got it last night. So delicious. Oh my gosh. I almost I wonder. Again for that one. <laughs> yeah, and I almost wonder if you could take the chochos, chop them up, put them in the tabbouleh. Salad all the time. I, I put them on top of all my salads. Great idea. Well, yeah. I can't wait to see it. I haven't, I don't know what the chochos are, but so I can't wait. But then, you know, we'll. We'll see what we can do for maybe a class around the cho-cho. I think Ricky wants to do a class with you with the cho-cho. Okay. The name cracks me up. <laughs> I know. It is Ricky from cho-cho. Okay, so once you get your dressing going, you got to taste it, guys, because like for mine, I needed to add a little bit more honey. Wow. Yep. All right. Just to cut it because it's you know and i'll probably add a little more oil so and then what, what brian i want to do a class with you we can teach together that would be fun that is so awesome I, what do you want to teach brian gumbo well i can do that too okay. But nice skills. You know, what do you want to do? Of course. What about the pomegranate molasses? 
Yeah, let's teach that. That sounds great, actually. We'll throw leafy greens into it. But Brian, hear what you wanted to teach. What was the first thing you said? Oh, knife skills. Oh, knife skills. Who? Oh, knife skills. Yeah, you His teach that. connection's blurry. Yeah, That's knife skills are, are really important. It makes life so much easier. Angel looks mad at me. I'm not mad at you at all. I think it's great. I think it's a great idea because that's super important because I'm sitting over here without well, sharp knives. She's over there with no knife skills and I'm over here with no knife. Yeah, I have a ceramic knife. Look at how small this is. I know that I I am like not following any rules with this knife, but it's all the only thing that cuts. <laughs> Throw that ceramic knife in the trash. Oh. No, and lazy people like me um, wonder if we could put it in a food processor. <laughs> well, let me tell you, when I was making, when I was working at the restaurant, I was making tabbouleh for 70 people. Okay, bet your butt that I was using a food processor. Right, right. I, I was chopping a whole case or two of parsley. <laughs> But see, I'm a purist. Like, I do love the, the human hand on the food. Oh, so do I, but there's a place for everything, girl. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not when you cook for 70 people. No, my son keeps telling me that, Mom, can I get a KitchenAid mixer and a food processor and a good mic? The only thing, um, Brian, what I was thinking is in that knife class that we do, we also talk about equipment because, you know, I have certain pieces of equipment that I... It's like, I can't live without, and, and certain brands that I particularly like a wearing, I like certain things from here, you know, because eventually for these classes, we are gonna have, people are gonna need a food processor and a, either a Vitamix or some, no, no ninjas, sorry, but either a Vitamix or some other high power blender, because those two pieces of equipment, I can't live without. My dressing is so good. Right? It's so good. Right, Brian? Right. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Vitamix. Um, uh, Vitamix, we need... wearing processor, and a dehydrator, and I'm done. Oh, oh. Well, I dehydrate now. That's cool. Well, well, I was a raw food chef. That's really my background. I'm a raw food chef. So I did all my own sprouting. Then I made all my own breads and crackers. I also did all my, if I was making stuffed peppers and making black rice, I would do my rice because we were a raw restaurant. So we would do the rice in the dehydrator. We take out all the trays. We had a big stainless steel pot. I'd soak the rice. Then that night I would leave it in the dehydrator overnight. By the time I came back to work in the morning, the water was all absorbed and I had fluffy, gorgeous black rice. So you can teach me a few things, and I can teach you a few things. There you go. That's what it's all about. Good. Yeah, so absolutely. I'd love it. Okay, so you guys get your dressing. Have you tasted it? No, I'm doing it right now with bread. Right here to our right, my sister. I'm almost there. I'm, I'm a little bit behind. That's all right. What are you working on, Christy? I'm doing the mint right now. Um, well, yeah. I, didn't let, I didn't have the lemon balm, you know. I I'm, have so many ingredients over here. They have a lot to have everything that you have. I'm jealous. You know what I love about this recipe? What I would do, like, is chop some of these greens and put them in a light bowl of, like, ice water. And then every day I have a handful to pull from to add to my grains, my beans, my nuts, what have you. Like, she's just basically planning the food for the whole week. If you think about it, you just save some of it, you know, each day. You keep and it dry when you, when you really try to keep, this was the, my brother's a chef, and he taught me this trick. But yep. if you really try to keep it dry the seeds dry the the cucumber like cut the seeds out it just stays longer right so All right. when we would we would really i mean i would work painlessly to get the seeds out of the cucumber and the tomato so that it you know we would keep it longer that makes so, so much sense so it doesn't go soggy i never even thought of that 
Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm a purist, so you know, when it comes to that, I don't like pre cut stuff. I, I like to just cut it when I need it, and that's it. But that's just me. That's right. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So that's interesting. Even if it's like, so you're just going to chill it and kill it. If you don't, if you don't finish it, what do you do with it? Compost it? Okay. If I, well, okay. I think I'm confused. So basically, I don't, I, you know, a lot of people for the week will prep all their vegetables and whatever and get them ready so that they don't have to do all the chopping every night. I understand why people want to do that. And it's, there's no problem. You can do it. But for me, um, I think two things. I think the life force is gone. Certain aspect of the life force of that green and vegetable is you lose it. Oh, wait, didn't, isn't it already gone if I got it in a store? Yeah, That's but it's better. Even, it's even worse if you then cut it and then leave it cut up in your refrigerator. Okay, fair okay, enough. Well, I'm glad I asked because I think, you know, it's such a balance with people, um, you know, in terms of what is the best way to use my food and how do I, you know, prep ahead but not lose the nutrients, right? Right. Um, and also, I just, I, it, it just alters it. And also, when you cut that knife into, you know, when you cut into a vegetable, it's like, think about it as if you're cutting into something that's alive. You have to think of it as living alive food. Now, you know, restaurant stuff and, and chefing, that's a different story, but I'm just talking now from a more personal energetic area here we get into the esoteric part of food i love that like the life force is transferring to you and not so, being but, so, and here's the thing here's what i want you to do next between now and the next time we talk take some vegetables whatever it is i don't care what it is chop them up put them in your refrigerator then cut them let it sit for a day or two the next day cut up some that are fresh right there and then take a look at them visually and you tell me what's more appealing to you that's it that's all i have to say good i love that that's beautiful say one thing yeah i i want you to do compost it is so important to this land. Oh, it is. And we do. That's up for January. We have compost. Compost. When you, when you cut the end off of a zucchini or a squash, it needs to be composted. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so, what, so much of our like plan for educating our customers is like, you're so ahead of the game and like worm bins and regeneration this is all to be in my comfort we have we keep on the counter in our kitchen we have this container and in it i put all my cuttings everything that's discarded right here and then it goes into the compost tea awesome. so yeah yeah and you know what's funny like so we got this worm bin like in our test gardens and so the worm castings you know that are just yeah. like, all, i feel like i am I, I love it when I'm replenishing like our pots, right? And I'll put a new seedling in there and I just scoop a big thing of that from the worm castings from the worm bin. And I love it. I just put it in the soil. And that's why I can't, I mean, we're going to teach our, our, our uh, you know, all our members that, but I can't, I mean, I love, I feel like, oh my God, I'm giving an extra treat to the plant. It sounds so silly, but <laughs> that's what I feel like, you know? <laughs> Those are our babies. Okay. okay. Get back to the uh, dressing because we've got to do one more thing. So, did everybody taste their dressing and get it to where they want it? The dressing is so delicious. I wish you could all taste it. So, I yeah. don't know. I'm almost there. I'm drizzling the olive oil in. It looks so delicious. Gorgeous. Okay. So, then what you're going to do is you're going to take some of that dressing that you made and you're going to put some of it in another bowl. Chrissy has her hand raised. So, no, I'm just like, it's so good. <laughs> I, by the whole time you guys were talking, I'm racing as fast as I can to get to you know get caught up, and I was not even expecting it to be this good. Wow! 
Okay, sorry. I had to, that is exciting. <laughs> Go on, Robin. Okay, so you're gonna take some of your dress, put it in another bowl, okay. because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it and uh, let's see. I'm actually gonna- I already put it all in there, sorry. Right, so you're gonna take some of it. I'm gonna take half of it. Okay. Another bowl. And then you're gonna take some tahini. Oh, tahini. Guess what I got? Guess what I got? What'd you get? You walked away. <laughs> oh. Terry, oh gosh, I have been, you guys, I'm so sorry. Then, I've been monitoring the, the Terry. And then the, uh, what Terry, did you get? I hope you were not waiting for a while. I got so carried away cooking. No, no, she just she just asked if she okay, could. Okay, good. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know people were trying to come in. Okay. Here's the fun and games. Chocolate date tahini. Ugh. Robin. Where did you find that? Oh, I I know exactly what it tastes like. It's it tastes exactly like what it says. It right. is bizarre. Where did you find that? So then, if I was going to serve this, it, so now, did everybody split the dressing? Uh, no, I didn't. I went ahead and messed it up. That's <laughs> fine. It doesn't matter. And then you can add the tahini. And then, as a garnish, if I was going to do it with the tahini in it, at the end, I would be sprinkling on top some black sesame seeds. Yes. My oh, very cool. Yeah. Can you show us what it looks like when you added the tahini in there? Yep, I will. I'm going to add some more. And don't forget, whatever. Now I'm using a raw tahini, but if it was toasted, it would taste totally different. So I didn't want the toasted. And where can people get tahini? Just like at the grocery store or special grocery stores? I got mine at Whole Foods. I this is what I love this brand. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you. Ah, okay. Because you can get it and you can make it. Have you ever you made, make it? It. made it? Um, absolutely, you can make it. You never made it. That's a surprise. Never made it. <laughs> Are you shocked? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I got to see what this looks like. No, it's beautiful. Let's look. Oh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see because of the light. But, but it's just creamier. Oh yeah, there yeah. you go. Whoops. Oh wow, that looks so good. Yeah, so nice and creamy. Yeah. Yeah. I and have then, I'm gonna add another. So then you can add the dressing to the tabbouleh and toss it. Okay. And you got your hemp seed tabbouleh and then you can garnish it with some of your lemon balm, throwing the lemon balm, you cut up, throw that in your salad. Toss it with the dressing and then garnish it with whatever you want to garnish. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it. So that's it. Anybody have questions? So delish. Oh, I, I am like, wow. <laughs> I, want know, I want to know, Robin, you said that it was blood building and blood cleansing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, well, firstly, the yeah. part, every, really, everything in this, first of all, Okay, and you know, we'll go into it another time, but you know, red peppers are one of the most amazing vegetables on the planet. You've got the parsley, it, it's just loaded with, and, and you've got hemp seeds, so you got a tremendous protein in there. Um, you've got beautiful oils, and then you can also, we had avocado, you can put avocado in there if you want. You can, instead of the tahini, if you want to cream it up, you can mash in avocado. So, you know, this is really endless what you can do here with this. But well, how does it build the blood? What are the, th what are the, what are the things that build the blood? The parsley? <laughs> the parsley does. It's a cleanser. It's a cleanser. Well, it's you like, they always think, think of how powerful it is. Okay, if you eat a lot of garlic, you want to cancel that, you want to not smell so much, you eat parsley, you chew on parsley. You know, it's just, a, it's a, it's a cleanser. And I think, you know, for me, um, you know, buying organic healthy food is an investment in our health instead of paying for our sickness, right? Like pay for the good food 
that you eat and really nurture your body with this and the the rewards are worth it right like energetically everything well let me put it to you this way okay and, and we were, i asked if it was okay if i talk about this right because i equate food and sex as being equally important and the same thing all right so here it is if we don't have sex we can't procreate we can't continue the species if we don't eat good healthy food we die prematurely because <laughs> most of we mo most of us in the alternative world know that at least 80 to 90 percent of our modern day illnesses are food related okay so to me they're they're one and the same they're equally important to sustain life and so it, it's it, this is a must this is if and that's why we're in such a we, that's why we have such problems now with health because everybody's living on this fake food and and people are sick and they're dying and it, we should be able to live to a beautiful old age where we can move and not have illness and, and that's our natural state of being but our food supply the way it is and the way people are not willing to spend time in the kitchen so i say okay well you you know, you think sex is important. I mean, most people like sex if you're healthy. It's like, well, you know, you got to have sex and food. So get in the kitchen and have a great time. And if you have a partner, go play in the kitchen and make great food. And that oh my God, I love it, Robin. Thank you. I love that. And I would add, and go play in the garden. <laughs> exactly. Right. You got my husband's attention. He's like, your cooking show? What? His ears perked <laughs> right up. What are they teaching you? <laughs> I'm like, get out the olive oil. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Oh, Thank yeah. you so much. Now we just we just had someone join us at the very last minute. Um, and, and my we just made our tabbouli and our amazing dressing. Look at that. Oh well, we will post the recording right after it loads up. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry. Yeah, I just I just remembered that this was going on. I forgot to put it in my calendar. <laughs> That's what's beautiful about this. It's just like girl time. When you can make it, you can make it. Otherwise, we'll put it there for you for sure. Absolutely. Is, will, that, will that be on the Facebook or on the or in an email, the replay link? We'll do Probably both. We'll do both. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So wait, I'm going to put my video on so I can say hi. Hi, I'm the one who <laughs> tells you all the time. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm going to put everybody in here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think I have to say because, Em, you weren't here. and I, This is new. And I'm so excited to tell everybody tomorrow when I do the test garden training. The stem of the parsley is where, like, so much of the nutrition is. And uh, all of these years. are pulling out the most important part of the class. I'm sorry. You're so good at it. I'm so good at that. No, because I was so blown away when you said that. I'm like, I did not know that. And all these years, I'm pulling off the leaves, spending all this time pulling the leaves off, and I could have just been chopping the whole thing. And, and composting I it, right? Like, we didn't eat it. I would do it, and I'd compost it. I'm like, I could have been eating that. My body could have been benefiting. <laughs> so that's why we're together, is to learn. And that's the beauty of this community that we're building. Yeah. I think, you know... I, I do love that we all wore the same uniform. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but no, this is beautiful, a beautiful thing. It's my first time being able to join the class. So thank you so much. Happy Chef Robin Joy. Yes, absolutely. Thank Thanks so much, guys. But yeah, we'll definitely get the recording and we'll post it and we'll send it an email. And you'll probably get sick of how many times we'll send it an email. <laughs> and we'll obviously put it in the Facebook community. So awesome. great. Great. Do you well, want to? Well, Robin, real quick, do you want to tell everybody about next week, how we're going to do kind of like a, a fun reading? Yeah, tell um, us about it. So what yes. we've got, oh my gosh, talking everybody. Sorry, um, I just got a new phone. I don't know how to turn the sound off yet. Um, okay, so we have Saturday, Christy and I are going to be talking. Um, and we're going to talk quite a bit about immunity and, and all kinds of other good stuff. Um, and then for the Christmas party, so I'm going to do a reading because that's another part of what I do. And it's with a very special, special, it's brand new. I was number four person in the world to be certified as a reader for what's called the Food Healing Oracle Deck. 
And basically, it's the, the cards, it's all food, all veggies and fruits and nuts, herbs, whatever. There are 60 cards in this deck. And these girls, these women that developed this deck, I mean, um, one of them was, she has a, a degree in nutrition. So this is not airy fairy stuff. It's based on real science, what, what really food does for us on all four levels from emotional, mental, physical, spiritual. Okay. And so we do a reading with this and I'm going to do a reading for the group. So it will be really fun. Um, what do you need to bring or do? What do you, what should we, how should we prepare? I've never even heard anything like this. Right. You don't have to do anything. I will guide everybody through. We basically, I will show everybody the deck. I'm going to pull, I, and there are different types of readings. So I will decide what type of reading we're going to do. And we pull the cards. And then I tell you what those cards means and how that relates to food and health and on all different levels. Oh, so we can just be on a sofa. Just, yeah, we'll be on a Zoom call. We'll do this as a Zoom call, right? Oh, we and have to in the kitchen. Do we need to be in the kitchen? No, you don't have to be in the kitchen at all. You sound like Santa's coming. <laughs> I know. Everybody's texting me. <laughs> it's perfect for the holidays. <laughs> that sounds great. So it's kind of get comfy. It's really best beverage glass of wine or whatever you're going to have it's celebrate and we're going to do a fun reading okay. love it love it so exciting this sounds really fun thank you yeah, so much. yeah. great thank you so thank much robin you're welcome guys it was great to see everybody thank you so much for joining the class thank you thank you it was fun like so many of these this is fully yeah, no, and this is going to get replayed a lot. So it's like, you know, that's what's so fun about it. It's like, it's going to get replayed and replayed. So I'm excited, excited for people to learn what you just taught us. Thank you. My pleasure. Yes. All right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Everybody Thank have a good night. Bye-bye.